Open RAN is slowly gaining traction with network operators around the world. And one of the companies hoping to take advantage of the recent upturn in activity is Cohere Technologies, which has developed radio access network optimization software that can be deployed as part of an Open RAN architecture. And to find out more, I'm talking today with Cohere's CEO, Ray Dolan. Ray, good to speak with you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, it's been almost a year since we last met at MWC 23 in Barcelona. What's happened with Cohere since then? Well, it's nice to be with you as well, Ray. Um, in the last year, we've really matured uh, our first product to market, which we call our USM. That stands for Universal Spectrum Multiplier. Uh, we've also broadened our ecosystem with additional partners. And we've had some pretty good results out of some recent trials. In fact, our most recent trial with Vodafone uh, will be announced uh, at Mobile World Congress, and we had some very, very good results there in CU That Real. I look forward to sharing those with you during this, the discussion today. Now, uh, Cohere's claim for the Universal Spectrum Multiplier, the USM, is that it can improve 4G or 5G FDD networks by up to 2x, by two times, regardless of the spectrum band. Uh, how is that proving itself out in your customer trials? Yeah, so, well, we've done 4G and we've done 5G, and in both cases, those were FDD spectrum. That's unique, Ray, because most of the time, uh, folks believe that they had to go to TDD spectrum in order to keep the uplink and the downlink on the same spectrum. Uh, we've been the only company that's been able to do MU-MIMO on FDD at any kind of uh, significant performance level. Uh, you'll see in the announcement with Vodafone that it says that we delivered up to 1.5x, which obviously is different than the 2x uh, claims that we were able to experience in the lab. This most recent test was in the dense urban city of Ciudad Real. Prior tests were in Melbourne with Telstra and we achieved similar results. Now, I can say our results were larger, they were greater than the 1.5X, but there's still a lot of work to do. And I think people are comfortable, certainly Cohere is comfortable projecting 1.5X um, at this point in time. And then uh, our, next, our next test will be with another operator in North America where we'll do a more integrated uh, and uh, trial with another RAN partner. And from there, we'll probably get even closer to what the final outcome is. Now, just for context, there's about a trillion dollars of spectrum being used in the world in today's dollars. Some of that was auctioned or granted decades ago. There's also about 4 billion handsets worth about a trillion dollars attached to networks that have assets on balance sheets of about a half a trillion dollars. So you're talking about two and a half trillion dollars, if not more, of assets that can be leveraged by 50%. That's an enormous impact on an enormous industry and it's all done in software and it's all potentially integrated either in an open ran architecture with a greenfield player or in a brownfield play which is where we're going to go next so what's next for usm will we see it go to market this year and will there be any uh, commercial announcements uh, in addition to the trials it'll definitely be in the market this year There'll be some commercial announcements, most likely later this year, as we make progress with um, our first tier one RAN vendor that we'll integrate with. Um, we will also continue to evolve the E2SM interface, which is the interface that folks are talking across in order to make the near real-time RIC work and other things work in the open RAN architecture. And that USM has the potential to catch some uh, RFPs that are in the marketplace uh, and we're going to work very, very hard in order to integrate with players so that we can approach some business this year in 2024, for sure. Now, um, the open run sector has been stalling a bit, but uh, with a recent upturn in activity, uh, is 2024 going to finally be the year for open run? And if the open run pace doesn't pick up any further, uh, how is that going to impact Cohere? Uh, are you able to work in partnership with the incumbent vendors? So let me take the second part first. Yes, to be clear, we will work in partnership with the incumbent vendors and that will be a 2024 issue and there'll be some announcements uh, later on in 2024 about that. Uh, now, stepping back more broadly on OpenRAN, 
Uh, I agree with you that the open RAN movement, if you will call it that, has stalled a bit, but it's mostly because up until now, open RAN has been about opening the architecture and then putting it back in largely the same way. And if you think about it from a practical point of view, the operators end up with the same outcome, just a more complex solution, and in some cases, an even higher cost and a higher power consumption. And there's just no, no reason to do that. Now, the reason to open the network is to find insertion points to insert innovation. That's what Cohere is about, all right? So Cohere is not just um, going to have a good 2024, but we do believe we will be the catalyst for accelerating the more broad open RAN movement by inserting our USM into these open interfaces. And we've done a lot of work with our partners. We had 16 supporting companies in our most recent submission into the working groups of open RAN. And with our USM now maturing, and with it being able to be deployed in either a brownfield or a greenfield environment, this should be a catalyst for open RAN. I mean, open RAN should be about dramatically improving the spectral efficiency, significantly reducing the cost structure, or dramatically improving the user experience, whether that's at the edge or battery consumption or some other way. Otherwise, the open RAN movement was about trying to squeeze economics from the supply chain. There's just not a lot of economics left in the supply chain. Right? There's many, many companies are struggling. And so opening their networks in order to beat their margins down is kind of like uh, not exactly the most important reason to do open RAN. Okay, yeah, there's no doubt the operators are looking for multiple proof points from open RAN right now. Um, now, last year, MWC, you took to the keynote stage with Lockheed Martin. Uh, and besides talking about USM, uh, you and Lockheed Martin CEO, James Teichlet, uh, discussed how the OTFS waveform could be the solution to high communication challenges with OFDM. Uh, is this the year that Cohere divulges more about its decade plus development of o OTFS and its plans for 6G, or as you like to call it, multi-G? So multi-G is a better word, my opinion, Ray, because 6G just, uh, it brings to mind this notion of chronology and the fact that you can't do 6G until 5G is done. And since 5G is struggling, people get caught up in that debate. So we do use the term multi-G. And the good news is our USM handles 4G and 5G, in fact, handles 4G and 5G together. And so as a result, it'll handle anything. And OTFS will naturally live on top of it because it was born connected to our USM. If you remember our journey, we proposed OTFS as an entire solution into 3GPP in 2016 and 2017. And of course, the world went with a wider band OFDM architecture. So putting it back on top of the USM is a natural path for us once we get our USM inserted in these RFPs. Uh, to your question, yes, this will be the year we bring more OTFS energy to the marketplace. It's important to understand that OFDM architectures, as powerful as they are, have a cyclic prefix that is very Doppler sensitive, and anything that moves very quickly absorbs a greater and greater uh, cyclic prefix, and it's, it crowds out the payload, if you will. And for these reasons, that's why these uh, the, the most recent NTNs that are trying to do direct satellite to phone are actually only able to do a short SMS message because there's really not a broadband capability right now to the satellite from a standpoint of a, of a handset. OTFS solves for that. There's no cyclic prefix and it handles Doppler resilience all the way up to tens of thousands of miles an hour. And that's what we were fundamentally talking about with Jim last year, that OTFS addresses the warfighter environment but for us, commercially, the most important thing was to insert our, U our USM into the commercial networks because then it's a seamless transition in software to overlay OTFS. And those are the issues that we're gonna be focused on this year is going for commercial business in USM with the operator community and overlaying OTFS and some field trials for the most strenuous use cases. Hey, interesting. Um now, of course, uh, at MWC, we expect to hear a lot about uh, Open RAN and about the evolution of 5G to whatever comes next. Um, but obviously, we're going to hear a lot about AI as well. There's, there's no way we're not. Um, how do you see AI playing a role in the kind of networks that, that you're involved with in, in terms of 
uh, trials and, and then uh, commercial rollouts. What, what's the important thing to consider? Because AI has been around for a long time uh, already, but it's, it's de definitely gaining momentum and not just with generative AI. Yeah, it's a great question, Ray, and this, this is a very big field, and over time it's going to have a very, very big impact. So I kind of, uh, I isolate AI into two fundamental domains, the non-real-time domain and the real-time domain. Uh, in the non-real-time domain, there's going to be massive data lakes that operators can leverage and feed into AI engines and see if they can do better uh, network administration, and all of the things that are going on, that some of which drive their OpEx significantly. Now, that's important, and uh, leveraging cloud tools will be a component of that, and I would expect that that's gonna drive down OpEx, probably even headcount, and give them a better financial framework, at least on a marginal basis. Cohere is focused mostly on implementation of AI in the real-time domain, and this is where it's important that you understand, at least just a little bit for this audience today, how our USM works. We use a radar-based technology, which is the delay Doppler domain mathematically. It's, uh, and we see the individual reflections that go on that make the wireless environment so challenging. So if you're walking around Barcelona and you're bouncing off of buildings and buses and trees and, and people, those reflections are superimposed on your handsets receiver and it's a very challenging process to figure out how to make sense of that. Now, what we do is we see those individual reflections and we can map those individual reflections and they are very slowly moving, if they move at all, and they are frequency independent. That is the data set that determines the channel state information of every attached user. So we expose the data set that feeds into the AI engine that will influence the real-time control plane of wireless networks. I've, I've believed for a long time that it's not as much about data science as it is about data sets. And for the first time, we're going to tame the RF environment. We're going to make it a deterministic channel. It'll feel like you're on a wire and the AI engine will be able to see the patterns that exist that have otherwise looked like just a snow globe to the scheduler uh, in a wireless network for the last 30, 40 years. It's a very exciting time for us. The first thing we want to do is demonstrate the capacity improvements associated with their USM. Then we want to demonstrate how easy it is to integrate in either a brownfield or, or a greenfield environment. And then finally, beyond that, we're going to show how powerful it is as a data set tool to drive AI in the real-time control plane. So when that happens, Ray, watch out. I mean, you're going to drive massive improvements and you're also going to be able to control the RAN from the cloud. Okay, well, <clears throat> uh, exciting times. I think this is the kind of uh, use case uh, that uh, that many are looking for with AI, rather than just the uh, the general AI will change your life and lower your opex kind of thing. So uh, good to hear a concrete Correct. example there. So Ray, hopefully we hear more of these kind of things uh, on the show floor at Barcelona and in in the meetings that go on uh, during the course of that show and. Uh, I look forward to catching up with you there and, uh, and finding out what kind of conversations you've been having. So see you in Barcelona. See you in Barcelona, Ray. Safe travels.